We're in San Antonio, Texas for a week three matchup in the 2011 season. The Cardinals defense weren't able to hold Abilene out of the end zone, making the game 45-44 in a thrilling double overtime. Tyler Peoples kicked what was the game tying PAT at 45 all. However, on the kick, Harlingen was called for defensive holding and the Abilene coaching staff elected to go for the win from the one yard line. This moment is about to wipe out everything that was once criticized about Rio Grande Valley football and made it matter. Now, let's rewind. The former Cardinal, now Harlingen head coach, is confident that his team can keep up with anyone in the state, physically, speed-wise, including the Abilene Eagles, who they will take on. With an attendance of 6,000 eyes watching, I'm sure Abilene High head coach Steve Warren didn't expect to be in this situation. Coming into the season, they were a max prep state-ranked team who were expected to make a deep playoff run come December. Gone were running back Herschel Sims, who went on to play at Oklahoma State, quarterback Ronald Sims, who went on to go to SMU, and a host of other players who helped Abilene High go 24-4 over the last two seasons and win a state championship in 2009. A team so good that they in fact made a movie about them starring Lawrence Fishburne and Mel Gibson's son Milo Gibson titled Under the Stadium Lights. The 2011 Eagles were young and small, but very quick. Coach Warren is eager to point out the players on this year's junior-dominated roster were undefeated as freshmen and on the junior varsity last season. So if they were going to live up to their potential, then the offense would have to do some heavy lifting. And on the opening drive from Abilene, they looked up to the challenge. Harlingen opened the game with a strong defensive stand forcing an Abilene punt, but Kevin Ledesma was intercepted in the end zone by Abilene DB Nate Kidley. The Eagles wasted little time taking advantage with Walker scoring on a 47-yard strike to put the Warbirds up 7-0. After an exchange of field goals, Abilene held a 10-3 advantage early in the second quarter when Ledesma's second interception of the half gave Abilene a short field goal. Scoring on a 10-yard run by Paxton Grayer leaving the score 17-3, Abilene didn't seem to be worried about the team they were supposed to easily beat. At the start of the game, most of Abilene didn't even have a reason to be aware of Harlingen High. And now that they put up 45 points, they have our attention. The most important thing behind this is just becoming immune to the big game. That's the whole thing behind it. And we're not trying to go out and prove a point to nobody. If anything, we're just trying to kind of reassure ourselves that we're ready for the big stage. But you know what? It's not about saying, it's about going out there and doing and stuff. So, you know, people can talk. Uh, you guys can hype it up. Bottom line is we gotta, we're we going to go out there on a business trip and, and take care of our responsibility. Hailing from Harlingen, Texas, the Cardinals were never once to shy away from getting better. Randy Bermea, Kevin Ledesma, and Brian Blake all returned for their senior season with the Cardinals and were motivated by the fact that they haven't been able to advance past a regional championship for the third year in a row. They came close in a game of the century matchup the year before, but were ultimately derailed by a one-point loss to San Antonio Stevens, a team that was led by All-State athlete Michael Thompson, a University of Texas commit who went on to play in the NFL. Harlingen finished the 2010 season 12-1, and, and as a team from the Rio Grande Valley playing anyone north of Highway 281, that usually meant they took a beating, embraced the experience, and moved on. It had been 12 years without a team from the Rio Grande Valley advancing past the third round of the Class 5A playoffs. In 2007, Harlingen would hire alumni Manny Gomez to lead the Cardinals. The move paid off after Gomez brought them to a 41-9 overall record, including three district championships, three bi-district championships, and three area championships. After both schools had interest in playing each other, Abilene was under the impression they could host an RGV team to set the young Warbirds up for success. And as for Gomez, he knew this would give his team the confidence they needed to get past the third round. And once Harlingen arrived in San Antonio, they weren't just gonna roll over. After a big run by Blake, the Cardinals would cut the Abilene lead as Ledesma hooked up with Omar Hunter for a 14-yard touchdown pass, making it 17-9. Big Red's defense would rise to the occasion as Rodriguez would make a monster play, forcing a fumble which would be recovered by defensive end Justice Ortega. They continued momentum as Blake would score on a six-yard run to make it 17-15 with Abilene leading. The Warbirds went on a great drive to extend the lead 24-15 as Abin Walker hooked on a 10-yard touchdown pass, taking advantage of Harlingen's aggressive defense. The nine-point edge wouldn't last long as Harlingen's speech to Randy Bermea returned the ensuing kickoff for 86 yards capitalizing on the short field as Blake gets his second touchdown run of the game, making it 24-22, Abilene at the half. Waiting in the field house, Coach Gomez knows it's time for the Cardinals to step it up. If they wanted to solidify their ballot as one of the greatest teams from the RGV, this was their time to dream big. Dreaming to reach the UIL State Championship is what every football player in Texas does, but in the RGV, only one school currently holds a state title. A 1961 Donna Redskins team led by head coach Earl Scott 
with Charlie Williams finishing as a 3A state finalist with the 1962 and the 1963 PSJA Bears. Even for a Week 3 matchup, this isn't a stage that a lot of kids from the RGV get to experience. In fact, most kids don't play college football after the high school level. Only a select few have. So for Gomez, it's important to let the team know that this was their moment to dream big. Harlingen got the ball to start the second half and immediately the Cardinals jumped on top with an impressive drive. Settling for a field goal on a 25-yarder, Grant Gorman helped give the Cards a one-point lead. The breaks appeared to all go Harlingen's way later in the third. As Abilene looked poised to jump back ahead marching inside the Harlingen 5, Grayer looked to be on his way to another score, but a fumble in the end zone was recovered by the Cardinals defense ending the Eagles scoring chance. Harlingen was ready to pounce on the Abilene miscue as Mark Rosales scored on an 18-yard touchdown pass from Ledesma to make it 31-24, but the lead could not be extended as once again Abilene blocked the PAT. After forcing an Abilene punt, the Big Red offense would march 84 yards to go on what many thought was the game-winning drive. Charlie Powers would score on a 30-yard touchdown pass from Ledesma to build a 14-point lead with a little more than six minutes remaining. Cutting the lead, Grayer scored from 11 yards out with just 3.09 left. Trailing by seven, Abilene decided to go with an onside kick, but the kick went out of bounds and Harlingen would keep the football. On first down, Harlingen would get a five yards illegal participation penalty, which immediately put the cards in a hole. But Ledesma made a big mistake running out of bounds instead of staying in bounds to run out the clock, saving Abilene at least 40 seconds. The Eagles took over at their own 25 with 2.35 remaining and wasted no time against a tiring Harlingen defense. The drive ended with a 29-yard run by Grayer with just about a minute left to tie the game at 38. Manny Gomez was starting to see himself in familiar territory. Everything seemed to resemble last year's regional game. A fake punt and a defense who has already stopped the Cardinals for a two-yard loss with 36 seconds left in the game. Abilene can finally end it all. And while watching your team fall behind to a small school is never much fun, it was the Warbirds offense that stepped it up at the end, giving Abilene something to scream about. I guess until the Cardinals got another interception, ultimately sending the game into overtime. Abilene took possession in the first overtime, and on a fourth and six, elected to go for it instead of attempting a field goal, but a Harlingen offside penalty gave Abilene a fourth and one at the 16. Once again for the Cardinals defense, it was Rodriguez who stepped up and made the play, stuffing Grayer for a three-yard loss to give Harlingen the ball after the Eagles failed to score on their possession. The Cardinals offense would get a first down inside the Abilene 15, and all they needed was a field goal to win the game. Gorman would line up for the potential game-winning 40-yard field goal, but once again, the Abilene special team came through blocking the Harlingen kick, setting up the thrilling ending for the second overtime. At this point, everyone is gassed, but then they go again. After taking a 45-38 point lead on a 23-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Ledesma to Charlie Powers, the Cardinals defense weren't able to hold Abilene out of the end zone as Ebb Ab went 17 yards untouched to make the score 45-44. Tyler Peoples kicked what was the game tying point at 45 all. However, on the kick, Harlingen was called for a defensive holding. Coach Warren, fed up, elected to go for the win from the one-yard line. Paxson Grayer racked up 130 all-purpose yards with three touchdowns. The wild overtime sequence ended in what was a wild game that featured 89 points, 50 first downs, several lead changes, and 1,075 total yards. Abilene's offense would give Grayer one more chance to put the game away. And here we are. A small school looking to shock the powerhouse. An Abilene squad looking to make another run at a state title. A junior running back looking to fill a big role. And one play to decide it all. Welcome to a moment in history. dreaming by dream big and and as, as you play the game as you go to sleep at night during the week dream big and all these kids were talking about their about their dreams that they were having and so guys this is it now let's go let's go chase those dreams down last year had a lot to do with it we didn't want to have that feeling again losing the season last year it's so fun to play in a game like this i've never felt this way before i mean this team's making history right now and 
just the emotions like, man, I just, I'm glad to be a part of this team right here. Another thing to take note of was that the Harlingen fans came out to support their Cardinals tonight. The whole side of the home stands at Hero Stadium was filled with black and red. Manny Gomez saying it was a great night for the Harlingen community, great night for his football program, but a great night for the Valley. They showcased what football is all about down in South Texas.